Hello, and welcome to Armenian Enough, a podcast about life and identity in the diaspora, with your host, Lara Vanian Green. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Armenian Enough. As we approach the end of the year, many of us look back and take stock of how our lives went over the last year and what changes, if any, we'd like to make in the new year. Improving health and fitness seem to be universally popular goals. They're certainly a part of my goals. And if they're a part of yours, but you don't quite know where to start or you've grown tired of your current exercise routine, then this is the episode for you. I can virtually guarantee that today's guest has created a workout program that you've never seen in quite this way before. Tigran is a certified personal trainer from the world-renowned National Academy of Sports Medicine. He is also a youth exercise specialist and certified nutrition coach. Tig, as he likes to be called, is the founder of Tig Fit 100, an all-encompassing workout program featuring his proprietary resistance bands. And he is now preparing the launch of his new workout program, premiering on January 1st, 2022, which is right around the corner. While Tig is proud of his many accomplishments, I get the feeling that the one that's closest to his heart is that he holds the California state record for most points scored in a single high school basketball game. <laughs> What's the team called over at Miss Robian? I don't know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Miss Robian. Welcome to the show, Tigran Grigorian. Thank you so much, Lara, for having me on. I'm uh, honored to be on and excited. So thank you so much for the opportunity. It's my pleasure. Um, what is the team called? Do you guys have a mascot at Miss Robian? Uh, Bulldogs. That's right. Oh, okay, Bulldogs. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were thinking what the other team was called. They, the other team, I think, actually changed their school name a few years after that. <laughs> oh, interesting. But it doesn't matter. You're the one that scored the 100 points in the in the basketball game. <laughs> yes, that's right. It still holds the California state record. So I'm happy about that. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about, you know, your background and the role that Armenian culture played in your growing up. Yes. So I was born in Yerevan and uh, came to the U.S. at the age of five and uh, been in Montebello, California and around that area ever since. And, you know, Montebello had a good amount of Armenians, so I was lucky enough to grow up in an Armenian community. But uh, the Armenian culture, when I think of it, it, it taught me to be proud, to be strong, taught me perseverance. And, you know, it just taught me to use my creativity and uh, imagination a lot. With the background of the Armenian culture, it, it's, it taught me the unity also of like our brothers and sisters in Armenia and outside in the diaspora. So initially I didn't go to an Armenian school, but eventually I went junior high and high school uh, to an Armenian school and it created a, a brotherhood with my friends. Fortunately, I'm still able to keep that friendship and brotherhood 20 years after we've graduated. So I still have those friends. So the number one thing that stands out to me would be family when it comes to the Armenian culture. And, you know, we have different types of families. Different cultures have that, right? You have your, you have your blood family, which is like the people you grow up with, your cousins and, you know, your sisters, your brothers. And then you have your friend's family, like, you know, you call brother from another mother. I have several of those. Those are my friend's family. And then I played basketball, as we talked about. And that basketball brotherhood is completely different from your friendship brotherhood. And that's a different type of family. But that's the number one thing that stands out to me when my upbringing with Armenian culture is is family. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I grew up very close with my cousins. And, you know, just like the Armenian families, we were at a family barbecue every weekend. And it was great, like seeing the family and playing with the, with the cousins in the weekends and eating delicious home food. Yeah, we would go to the beach, parks, various places and spend quality time together. So the number one thing that I'm proud of, you know, of my upbringing that it taught me the importance of quality time with family and loved ones. And, and I really cherish those bonds and relationships that, you know, I've created with family and friends. I love that. It sounds like your entire life was really immersed in Armenian culture. So 
maybe it's difficult to parse out like what part was Armenian? It was all Armenian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it, you know, I went to high school, uh, non Armenian for two years. I got recruited for basketball at St. Paul and it was a Catholic school. And, you know, I, I, I have several non Armenian friends as well, different brotherhood with them. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, the Armenian culture has taught me a lot. And I'm not your like traditional. I would say Armenian guy, even though I'm born from Yed- in Yerevan, right? Okay, how so? How are you not traditional? Like, I, I, I love our Armenian culture. It's so rich. It's got so many great traditions. Like, for, for example, reading the coffee cup, right? Which I hope like, you get to read my coffee cup one day. <laughs> I would be honored to. <laughs> yes, I, I, I would love that. But it, it's we're so rich in traditions, and I love those traditions. But I'm also very open-minded. I like to try new things and new experiences. Uh, and I'm open to that. How so? I would say, like, I, I explore different types of plant medicines. You know, I'm open to trying that. You know, just having an open mind um, because we live in a melting pot in the United States. And just as human beings, you know, we can't be so closed minded about about things. And that's how we grow, I feel like, is just having an open mind and giving everybody a chance and opportunity to speak their mind and their opinion. Well, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, that's really one of the main things that our podcast is about is opening up our minds to different definitions of what it is to be Armenian and how many millions of different kinds of Armenians can we be? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Having that, you giving people that voice and that platform to express themselves. That's amazing. Thank you. How did your passion for fitness and nutrition come about? I mean, it sounds like you were always active, but this is like your entire life now. So where did this passion start for you? So it obviously started when I was a kid. I moved here to the United States, age of five. And it all started with basketball. I started, my uncle was a huge sports fan. He watched the Lakers and I watched the Lakers also, but I started watching Michael Jordan, which I think is the greatest of all time. And, you know, watching basketball, I fell in love with the game. And then I went to like a, a it was like a carnival at a church and they had this booth with a basketball game. And I, I did well, I was shooting, I won the poster. And next to it was a booth of a sign up for like little league basketball, right? In Montebello. And I signed up for it. And ever since then, you know, basketball and exercise has been part of my life. So when I started to take it really serious was, I would say, five years ago um, when I lost my dad. Um, I I'm lost sorry. Him. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he, he was battling breast cancer, which is obviously very uncommon in men. And, um, you know, it later shot down to his head. Oh. So from there, you know, I had brain cancer and, you know, he died five years ago and after he passed, I I became more conscious of the nutrition aspect and the mental aspect of exercise and not just about exercising to look good at the beach or at a pool party, you know, or something like that's what I was usually doing it just to look good. But exercise and nutrition and health and wellness is is more than that. And that's when I really took it serious when I started looking into the nutrition aspect more and my sisters, both of my sisters, I have two older siblings, sisters, no brothers. They're both amazing, beautiful, married with kids, several kids. So they have been vegetarian for over 20 years now. Yay, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> right? So they, 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 you know, they had my dad when he got diagnosed with the breast cancer. He battled it for, I want to say seven, eight years, the breast Oof. cancer. But he went very heavily plant-based. And imagine a traditional Armenian man in his late 50s, all of a sudden not eating chorobas, no more, no more barbecue, right? Yeah. No more meat, very little chicken here and there, maybe like very little, like maybe a handful of times a year. He went very plant-based. He started watching his nutrition. And at that point, it didn't still trigger to me. I don't know why, until I lost my dad. Then I said, okay, you know what? Let me talk to my sisters and find out more about this vegetarian plant-based option. Their kids, my sister's kids, the oldest one is in college. Now she is 18, going to be 18, actually, in a couple of weeks. She's, they've never tried meat. They've been vegetarian for their whole lives. And I said, okay, let me look into it. And when I do something, I research it, and I just go right into it. If I make up my mind, I just go right into it, and I do it hardcore, right? Mm-hmm. I just have that type of attitude. And I went straight vegan. I said, I'm going to go vegan. And I did it for three months. And to tell you what, it was amazing. I, I had the best stamina and conditioning that I've ever had in my life with basketball, with exercise, with everything. I felt great, like inside and out, mentally clear, everything. 
What made me kind of stop is I lost a lot of weight though. And maybe I wasn't getting enough calories. Uh, I wasn't doing it right, getting enough protein. And I lost like 15 pounds in three months. Oh my God. Yeah, it was crazy. And, and my buddy was getting married that weekend or that year, I should say. And we were going to uh, Hawaii. And I went to Hawaii and everybody, and I had shaved my head that, <laughs> that week for that weekend. And usually I don't shave my head. Uh, I have like a lot of hair. And people were just coming up to me and asking me if I'm okay. Like I lost a lot of weight. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like they thought I was like ill or something. Like, are you sick? And um, but you know, I told them no. I just you know been vegan. So so yeah. So that made me go more plant based. But when I came back from that trip, I, I started eating meat again a little bit. And now I eat meat, like chicken mostly. Cut out the red meat, but I'm mostly plant based. And I just it makes me feel better overall. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I know we're here to talk about a workout program, but nutrition is what, like 80% people say of your fitness and then the working out is the other 20? I agree. agree? Yeah, I agree. 100%. Yes. And and I'm always a little jealous when people are like, yeah, I went vegan and I just started losing all this weight. I'm like, I've been vegan for over a decade and I cannot lose a pound to save my (laughs) life. But hey, good for you. (laughs) Uh, let, let me coach you on gaining weight <laughs> with healthy food. Oh, man. It's really amazing that I shouldn't say that is really amazing. It's meat and chorobats and all that is such a part of our Armenian culture and food that it, it is really hard to to eliminate those from your diet from a culture perspective. And also, this is more universal and I don't really understand how it got to be this way. but eating meat is somehow seen as manly and being vegetarian or God forbid vegan is seen as like, you know, what you're not a man. You're not like hunting and killing the beasts, you know, (laughs) on your own, but, but for health reasons, and you know, this, there's a, there's a ton of vegan bodybuilders and athletes who have said that switching to plant-based action, but measuring their macros, measuring their protein, making sure they're getting the right amount of everything Mm -hmm. has made them better and stronger athletes than when they were just eating a regular, you know, omnivore diet. Right. Yeah, no, I agree that, you know, the research is out there and it's proven. I agree with that, that, you know, eating plant-based or vegan or vegetarian is making you feel a lot better. You just, like you said, you have to do it correctly, count your macros and get enough protein and get all your nutrients uh, the B12, you know, there's a certain type of B12 vitamin that you get from red meat. So if you're vegan, you got to make sure you get that from other sources. You know, you could get vitamins or I, till this day, drink B12, even though I have red meat, but I have a B12 vitamin. It's like in a jar that I, I take a couple of liquid drops every morning. Mm-hmm. So things like that are critical, but yeah, I, it makes you feel so much better and stamina wise and you feel light and you feel, you know, clear headed. So I, I'm, I'm all for that. And I, I agree with you is just finding that, you know, that balance of accepting it from the people. Yeah. That base is so much better for you. <laughs> and not to brag, but I had my blood work done a couple of weeks ago and my B12 was way high. Like it was above the limit. I'm like, oh, I should stop taking so much stuff in a supplement form. Yes, exactly. Congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but going back to what we were talking about. So the general attitude towards eating meat and being vegetarian or vegan in the Armenian community, we are familiar with. What would you say is the Armenian attitude towards exercise and fitness? You know what? I think it's gotten a lot better from where we were, uh, in in particular with Armenians. But also, I want to say in the entire world right now, because I feel like people are starting to realize the importance of exercise, nutrition, and you know, all the benefits that it comes with for the body and the mind. Specific for the Armenian community, we're not so health conscious. We've never been overall, you know, when it comes to exercise nutrition. But I noticed that it's been changing because the last time I visited Armenia was in 2019. And that was just before pandemic and the war and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But I, you know, signed up to the Gold's Gym over there. And I, and it was like a one week contract they gave me. There was women in the gym and more people exercising overall. And seemed like they were becoming more health conscious in Armenia. And that was like, when for me to see that, you know, I hadn't been to Armenia for since 2009 and 10 years. So it was a big shift in like perspective and mind change, right? You know, we're not known for that exercise lifestyle. And partly because 
I want to say it's more of a luxury item in Armenia because it's not cheap, some of those gyms. That makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, it was like seeing more uh, being a necessity. I, I didn't research or look into too many other gyms if they were more affordable, but I know Gold's Gym and there was like a Reebok's Gym. I think Reebok and they, they were expensive uh, as far as even for regular citizens of Armenia. So when it comes to the nutrition and exercise, you know, we're known for our, our barbecue. Like we said, food is greasy at times, high in fat. We love our sweets, right? I, I have personally have a major sweet tooth, so that I, I try to control it. It's, <laughs> it's kind of hard this time of the year with family bringing all this good stuff. You're like I'll bring over my stevia baklava. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, but we also can be very clean with our nutrition as Armenians. We have so many great vegetable dishes, you know, with our fruits and whole grains and all that stuff. All the Lent dishes are my favorite. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's so healthy and it's got full of protein and all kinds of good nutrients in it. Yeah. Okay. So we've skirted the issue enough. Um, <laughs> tell me, tell me about your new fitness program that you're launching on January first. What What is it? What makes it different from the hundreds and thousands of exercise programs, most of which I've probably purchased over the last several decades? But tell me what makes yours different. What's yours like? Yes. So dance fitness, it's called Adi Body, and it's spelled A-double-R-double-I, and then P-A-double-R-double-I, which if you're Armenian, it means come dance. So Adi Body means come dance. Basically, it's the best international dance fitness party that we're delivering directly into your living room or your home or garage or wherever you work out virtually. It's a high intensity interval training. And we, when you say high intensity, right, everybody knows high intensity interval training. We we spell it high (laughs) (laughs) H-Y-E. Oh, that's cute. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so we made it. We made a little thing, and you know, if, if if you're if you're Armenian or if you know any Armenians, you know about how intense we, people we are. Dude, that has to be like a T-shirt that you sell on your website. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that's a, that's pretty cool. So we're, we're doing a high intensity card, uh, cardio workout, interval training cardio workout, and we mix it with body weight exercises. So it's pretty cool. It combines the cardio workout of international dancing with bodyweight exercises, all while you're listening to some of the best music from all over the world. We feature music from international communities, and starting with obviously our motherland, Armenia, where we mix different genres of Armenian music with, you have your traditional Armenian, right? Then you have like Armenian pop, which is very popular right now. All the artists are doing Armenian pop with these DJ remixes and all that stuff, you know, you hear at the weddings. Then there's Armenian hip hop, right? There's rappers and Armenian hip hop. And we also have some Armenians that explore like with the Latin style, you know, Latin Armenian style. Okay. So we feature all that. We also feature Greek music. Um, we have a lot of Armenians in the diaspora from Greece, and but also like actual Greek music. Then we have Persian music, Russian music, Arabic music, and of course, we have uh, hip hop, like I mentioned, and an electro house music with Latin pop mixed as well. On top of all that, which is really cool, uh, we have custom music that's created by our music producer mm. that you haven't heard anywhere in the world. I, and I really mean that because like he uses the instru- international instruments from all these countries, like let's say Greece and you know Armenians, we have like the Duduk, the Zurna, right? The Dahol and the kanon and all that stuff. And Egyptians like have like the different types of bazook, the drums and things like that. So what he does, like if I tell him, hey, I need an Armenian track, this is kind of the style we're going for. And he gets creative and he mixes the Armenian instruments or the Greek ones, let's say, or the Egyptian ones or the Persian or Arabic ones. And he mixes it with upbeat, like beats from hip hop style and house electro music that you hear here in the States um, that's so popular. So it's really cool uh, introducing, you know, this type of music flavor to to the rest of the world. 
I remember when you first described it to me and you're like, it's like all the great music you would hear at a wedding. And I was like, oh, that would be amazing because <laughs> I, A, I wouldn't have all the appetizers sitting in front of me, like 20 plates piled on top of one another. And then I wouldn't have some like, random person pulling me onto the dance floor, but I'd have the music, which is the, the fun part of a, of a wedding and the dancing, which... I cannot wait to see this come together. I'm very, very excited. I will definitely be doing it on January 1st because I'm looking for something new to do. And this this is just too unique for me to pass up. So oh, I can't tell wait. me where you got the idea for it. That's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, so it, it you mentioned the wedding and um, that's kind of where I got the idea is, you know, we always go to the weddings and after the weddings, you're like dripping in sweat, right? You're all wet because of the amount of, time you spend on a dance hall, all the dancing you've done plus all the probably the alcohol you've some alcohol you've drank as well Try but it in heels is all i have to say oh yes <laughs> <and> heels <laughs> that's something by the end of the night the girls take off the heels and start doing the you know the, yes you yes. shall not go dance with you know all fast and everything you know. but that's kind of where it originated from you know we always say like only if i could dance like this every day i would lose so much weight you know people would say mm. so then my mom you know, I got my mom really into health and fitness when my dad, Good for you. yeah, when my dad passed, I said, you know, you know, we need to, you know, keep her busy. And so I started getting her a private training. And before I was a private trainer, I got her private training lessons in a gym nearby. And then she started doing private training and Zumba over there. So then one day, you know, we talked and we we're talking, we we're like talking about like, you know, going to weddings and how this is so much fun. And I've talked to it with my friends and I asked her, I said, well, why don't we, you know, what if we made this wedding kind of thing like an armenian thing into a, a workout kind of like you know what you're doing with zumba she goes i think that'll work yeah i think you, sh you should look into that i think it'll work so that's how it kind of came about talking you know with my mom and thinking about weddings and how we could bring that fun atmosphere like to life and bring it into your living room in your house i can actually picture some of my friends who do not work out trying this just because of the music and just because it's dancing and that's very uh, it's non-threatening. It's not like we're going to do an, you know, 80-day obsession workout and get your weights and your bands. It's like, no, it's dancing and it's music and something that everyone can yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned your mom. So I was just – and then in the beginning, you said it was high-intensity workout. And those two things I don't normally put together. So tell me a little bit about who it's geared towards in terms of both age and fitness level and stuff like that. So, yeah, though that's great because, like, I don't want to scare people about the high-intensity with, like, you know, they think Armenian. Oh, my God, it's too intense. But, <laughs> no, it's, it's a mixture of dance movements with body weight exercises. So it's geared towards – I would say kids that could do it from four or five years old all the way to seniors and adults, right? Um, like my mom is 65. I just gave her age away. She's going to kill me, but she's uh, 65. She's always 25 in your heart. Yes, yeah, she is. Exactly. <laughs> I always say age is just a number. Uh, it's like, so what you, it's how you really feel. Like, honestly, not to brag, but I'm 36, but I feel like I'm 25 sometimes uh, the way I feel. Yeah. Probably my mom. I'm, I'm 48, but I feel like I'm 80 most of the time. <laughs> That's funny. I'm making myself sound horrible. I'm not that bad, but yeah, some days. Oof. Yeah, no, it's all mindset for me. Like I, I still play basketball and I compete with like guys that are 21 years old and I'm in better shape than them Like because I take care yeah. of you know, nutrition and exercise. So, but yeah, to answer your question, this is suitable for all ages. Um, we have some really good plans coming in the near future for like specifically just for younger kids with some really cool graphics and things like that. But they could do it right now because the beauty is you're learning how to dance these ethnic cultural dances and you're moving and doing like little squats here, lunges there, little hand movement here and there. And you're getting a full total body workout from upper body to core to lower body, all while listening to the great music. And you don't even realize that you're working out and you're sweating and you're having so much fun. So um, we also have modified versions. So that's the key is like, let's say you have, you know, some type of injury or, you know, you're not able to do a squat jump. You're instead of squat jump, you do a squat. You're not able to do the jumping jack. You do the step jack where you step to the side. So we have modified versions as well. So one, one dancer will do a modified version and the other will do the regular one that way, you know, just not too intense for people. And it's for guys and girls. I know that dance fitness is geared towards women and definitely yeah 
It is. It is. <laughs> Definitely. And no doubt women, moms, young ladies, and teenagers like alike all will love this dance workout. But I think that I'm trying to gear this towards men as well and guys. And the the fact of being at home, you know, be doing it from your living room is gonna help because look, to go to a dance class live, which we have future live events coming, um, but right now we're just doing it all online. And for anyone to go to a dance class live, you're it's intimidating for a guy because it's gonna be mostly girls in there, and you don't want to go in there and make yourself look like a fool, right? You're 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 kind of, mm-hmm. it's 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 difficult. So by bringing this to your home, I feel like more guys would do this. Uh, because we have modified versions for guys as well, because guys in these particular cultural dances, like whether it's Greek, Armenian, Persian, Arabic, guys have a little bit of different hand moves and gestures with their, you know, shoulders, hands and things like that, hips. So we have modified versions for guys to try as well. And I feel like guys would do this in their house or living or garage and practice and learn how to dance while at the same time getting a great workout. I want to change that culture of a dance workout being just for women and kind of make it more suitable for everybody, you know, and have these live events where there's guys and girls at the same proportion of number, you know, almost like an actual international dance fitness party or a wedding, like, you know, where there's same amount of guys and girls and it's not heavily just girls. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that, but I just want to include everybody more in this type of uh, program and I think this will eventually do that. And who knows, you know, you go to one of these uh, international dance events and you practice at home, you get, you get better. Right. And then you go show off your moves in a live class and then maybe meet your future soulmate at one of our classes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Soup to nuts, Armenian dancing. Um, but I was just thinking like, I never really considered the, I don't know, social societal factor of men and dancing. Because I, you know, when you go to an Armenian wedding or something, there's always that like one or two guys that are phenomenal and everyone dances around them. But you see guys dancing. But I never thought about someone who doesn't know or isn't super familiar and how intimidating that can be. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, I have family members that are kind of like intimidated or they just don't like dancing. But I, I feel like if you're at home and by yourself or no one, you know, you dance like no one's watching because no one is really watching. Um, you're just on your own. It just gives you more confidence to just kind of try it and be yourself. And then, and like I said, you're going to be learning these dance steps at home as you're getting the workout. So next time you go to a wedding or, a, you know, Sweet 16 or a party or whatever, you can show off your dance moves and feel more confident about the moves. You know, my husband works out all the time. And he does these really serious workouts. And he's super cut and lean. And he's always wanting us to work out together. And back in the day, I used to do like P90X and oh, God, I forgot the other one. Not T25, the longer insanity? one. Insanity? No, not the insanity. Insanity. Yes. Oh, we used to do Sean T's Insanity. <laughs> and he loves it when we work out together. And I hate it when we work out together because I can't stand those workouts. I mean, I'll do them, but it's it's not fun. So this is like something that I think we can try together because he doesn't know how to do the Armenian moves. I mean, all, he's only seen me dance basically. So <laughs> he does the like uh, Armenian slash Indian, like screw in the light bulb thing with his hands. So he was trying to teach our daughter a couple weeks ago, like, look, I can, daddy can dance Armenian. And we were all like, <laughs> my, my, my nine-year-old was like, that's the way that girls dance. Boys don't dance like that and he was like what do you mean (laughs) yeah that's gonna be great because it's gonna you know the best thing is it's gonna introduce like these different types of cultural dances to uh, a non-armenian or a non-greek or you know like and yeah they're gonna learn how to do it and have fun at the same time because and the music is so good it's amazing it's captivating and it's upbeat so i think it's gonna be a a fun experience overall and before you know it it'll be over because our segments are gonna be 20 minutes 30 minutes and 45, 50 minutes, 45, yeah, 45, 50 minutes around there. So you have the option of, you know, doing a quick workout if you don't have that much time, a 30 minute workout right in the middle. I think that's the sweet spot, a 30 minute workout. Yeah. And then 45 for some of those that are like a little bit more, you know, have more time and more intense with their workouts. 
No, that sounds like a really good idea. Um, I was thinking when you were talking about the kids, before I forget, I just wanted to tell you, um, since you're still developing different programs, I was thinking if you developed one that was like a, basically like a PE class for, mm-hmm. for kids, that could be something that you could license, you know, maybe first to the Armenian schools and then beyond. But that sounds like something really fun that kids can do. And, it's funny you say you know, that. With- it's interesting you say that, actually. So... Um, really? Yeah, because what what I did, what we're doing actually, and I didn't mention this, but we're donating a percentage of all of our sales to uh, children of Armenia Fund. Aww. If you've heard of them, they do great. Of course, things. yeah, they're amazing. They're based out of New York. They're well established, uh, well supported, and they're doing amazing things for the kids in the villages of Armenia, like building smart schools. And uh, the kids in those villages are lucky because they're giving them resources. They're super bright kids. They just don't have the resources. And now they're getting the resources to do the same thing that those kids are doing in the city of Yerevan, like Yerevan. So it's an amazing thing that they're doing. So uh, I'm connected, connecting with them with their head director of funding. And we're going to be donating a percentage of our sales to the children of Armenia. And we're also going to be providing our programs at no charge, of course, to their physical education uh, curriculum that the kids can practice. And then as we grow, we're going to continue to add to that particular physical education with like, you know, nutrition and things like that as well. So that's, that's funny you say that we're working on that, developing um, some stages of that as it's coming. But yeah, so that we're really excited about that, being able to help them. Um, And then my goal is, you know, like we talked about earlier, like Armenians are not health conscious because some of the people out in the villages, they don't have access to the resources that others in the city have, right? It's still a poor country overall. And it's not their fault. They don't know the healthy stuff. The only healthy stuff, the great stuff that the village people do is mental health is good for them because they're, you know, have the wilderness around them, right? They could do that. And also their nutrition is all organic food, not like in the city now in Yerevan. They probably just like here, uh, you know, pesticides and things like that. But it's nutrition is organic for them, which is good. But, you know, I'm going to try to figure out how I could get people in the village access to stuff like this that, you know, they could improve their lives. And, And dancing is... Dancing is, is is great for mental health, right? And it, it's known. It's been researched. Right? It, it, it release exercise in general releases endorphins and dopamine and all that other good stuff, serotonin. So it's just that providing this for them would be like one of my goals is just to make them happier in their lives. You know, they're already happy people, but um, just to get them in the villages to use it somehow would be great. I, I'm just the fact that you've already thought about the philanthropic arm of this program and and you have a plan in place to give back already says a tremendous amount about you and about the the intention that went into this whole thing. I mean, I'm I'm very very impressed and I think that maybe you should be talking a lot more cuz I had no idea. And that's something that's really important and just tugged at my heartstrings in a big way while you were talking about it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's about like giving back in this world, just giving back and because that's how we grow. But most people wait to be established and then they're like, okay, when I'm set, <laughs> I'll give back. But you're building that into the platform. And I think that's um, that's pretty different. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and I even spoke to the spoke to the and I'll keep you informed. But we're going to do a, a fundraising event for Children of Armenia, a, a live event eventually, and it's all going to be for, for them. So not only do I want to donate financially, but I told them that my team, which is not that big, it's about five of us that are on our team outside of the dancers that we have, but our main core team uh, right now. And we, I said, we want to volunteer. And I said, is there any way we could volunteer with any type of programs that you have, we would love to volunteer. And he gave me some great ideas of doing a fundraiser. So that's in the works, hopefully coming early in the first quarter of 2022, a fundraiser for children of Armenia that we'll do here in LA. Please let us know and we'll put it out there and participate in any way that we can or that we're invited to. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, I will definitely let you know. I appreciate that. Sure. You mentioned nutrition guidelines that you're going to be providing. What is that going to look like? So I am a certified nutrition coach, as you mentioned earlier. I have a simple nutrition guide that I've created for my TickFit 100 online program. And it's, you know, very simple, easy nutrition guide to follow. And we'll provide that for our subscribers so that they could, you know, it'll help them in making health a lifestyle, basically with nutrition, exercise and mindset. 
it's a simple nutrition guide. So as a nutrition coach, I could give guidance on what to have. I'm not a registered dietitian, so there's no particular meal plans, even though I have friends in the industry that are registered dietitians that can do that. I just like to make it a lifestyle where you could do it after, you know, registered dietitians give you a specific meal plan and you stick to it. Great. If you could stick to that long-term lifestyle, that's great. Most people can't. So the, my important thing is just giving you enough information for you to make the, the right choices. And it all starts with mindset. But yeah, you'll get a copy of our simple nutrition guide from the TickFit 100 online program. And it does have vegan and plant-based options in there as well. <laughs> you knew I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has vegan and vegetarian options, gluten-free options. Um, Sweet. And, and I have a, a takeout and uh, dining out menu kind of kind of helps you choose what are healthy options and portions of what to eat uh, when you that is so important. Yes, it is. It is very important because, you know, that's, that's where it all starts from is, uh, you know, dining out gets really difficult. But, you know, you can enjoy yourself, have a cheap meal. But <laughs> <laughs> sure. But you know what? Even then, sometimes you think something is like you eat a big salad and you're like, well, it's healthy. I had a salad, but that salad's like 1800 calories right. <laughs> because of the wontons and the sweet stuff they put in or whatever, yeah, you know? Yeah. The croutons yeah. and stuff. So I give little tips like that. I actually say skip the croutons and go with like vinaigrette dressing or olive oil and lemon dressing. So little things like that in a nutrition guide, little things like that make a huge difference on the, on the back end. They really do. Mm -hmm. And on your Instagram, I know um, you give lots of nutrition tips. I do. Like you're always at the supermarket saying, don't buy this, buy this, look at this, look at the sugar, read the, yeah, like, <laughs> read the labels. Yeah, like people enjoy that. Like little little tips, like health tips like that, that go a long way. So they, they like it. I know you, the other day you were like, drink LaCroix instead of soda. I'm like, I don't drink soda, but I do drink LaCroix. And I'm like, he said it was okay. okay. He said it was okay. <laughs> soda. I'm good with it. Yeah. But you said, okay, this is not planned, but you said like no diet soda. And I know it's just, it's bad because it's garbage, but is there another reason that you shouldn't be drinking diet soda? Because of the ingredients they say, obviously it's zero, zero, zero sugar, zero calories and all that. They have yeah. options. I look, I'm okay if you have it like here and there, but I'm a big believer and advocate for just water, H2O, because our body yes. made over 60, 65% of water and wa nothing hydrates the body like water. So that's why I always say, look, if you're going to drink your eight cups of water, at least eight cups or whatever it is, like it doesn't have to be exactly eight, but I drink like eight to 12 cups of water a day. You know, you can have a diet Coke here and there. That's cool. Um, I just not, I've, I've seen research and again, I don't know how accurate this research is, but they say that drinking the diet soda leads to unhealthier habits with nutrition, um, little things like that. I'm okay with you having it a couple of times here and there, but I would rather just have you go with water and take it out completely. We make a big deal about drinking water in the household because if there's anything else, juice or a flavored drink, my daughter will be like, can I have some of this? Can I have some of this? And I'm like, drink water. Um, <laughs> but yesterday, last night, she told me a joke and she goes, mom, do you like water? And I said, yes. <laughs> and she goes, well, then you like 72% of me. <laughs> and I was like, I like 100% of you. Oh, that's awesome. It was, she was very she's cute. amazing. How old's your daughter? Nine. Uh, she's got a great sense of humor. God yeah. bless her. That's she's a competitive awesome. gymnast, so she's really into fitness. It'll be fun to see if she wants to do this dance workout with me. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Good for her. <laughs> that's a great deal. So one of the things that... I love about Beachbody on demand that I have been, you know, utilizing for a few years is that there is like there's a chat room feature and then they have Facebook pages. Is there going to be the equivalent of that for Audi Body? So we will have a, a Facebook page for the public and then we will have a private Facebook page, Ooh. which would be like, a, you know, for subscribers, members only, where we will, you know, use that to motivate each other to dance and have fun and just become the best versions of ourselves. So, yeah, there'll be a private Facebook group for subscribers as well. Awesome. What are you what are you hoping that your program will achieve? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I just want to bring... I want, I want to bring happiness to the world and to, to the entire world and to the Armenian people. You know, we as Armenians have gone through a lot throughout our history, especially with the most recent history with the Arsakh war, right, that happened during COVID. But it's, you know, a lot of us, uh, not just the Armenian people, have gone through a lot in the last couple of years from uh, what we've experienced out there. So um, I think just like we as human beings have endured a lot and dealt a lot, I just want to bring some more joy and happiness by offering 
something that's like completely brand new and fun that people could try out. Just want to create, I guess, a fun and new experience for people to you know, help them motivate them to move their bodies more often and make it part of their lives. So supporting people to be active in different parts of the world and regions, not just like, you know, we're on virtual so we could reach out to people worldwide. I think that music is a universal language and dancing is a universal language. So we can understand one another through rhythm and flow and beats and tunes and we can connect on a deeper level even though we don't speak the language you know so i i just want that you know for the entire world and you know this will be a, a gateway i think to connect people and especially the armenian diaspora from all over the world through the art you know of music and dance i love it i'm so excited how do people sign up i know you're launching on january 1st but how do people sign up if they want to be a part of it Yes. So uh, people can sign up by going to our website. It's uh, www.adipati, and that's double A double R double I P A double R double I dot com. And there's a seven day free trial. So they could try the seven day free trial. You could cancel anytime. There's no contracts. But I'm sure that once you try, you'll love it so much that you will uh, not want to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> Because we have new dance choreography, dance fitness choreography coming out each month to keep people motivated and engaged um, to succeed with their health goals. Um, but also, you know, we're going to in the future have some live classes coming up virtually. So not only are we going to have on-demand video access, but we're going to have some live classes virtually. So you could essentially take the cl live class from anywhere in the world. That's pretty neat, I think. And then eventually we'll have live classes in person. So when you add new dance routines every month, do people still have access to the library of the old routines? Oh, yes. Yes. So so basically, as a subscriber, as a member, you have your access to your on-demand videos. And then as we upload new exercise routines and videos, you will have access to the new content as well. So it's going to be new videos coming out each month. Yeah. That is so cool. I cannot. I really am excited. It's like something to look forward to. I get I get to dance. Yeah. And awesome. nobody watches me, which is the most important part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just like dance on your own. Like no one's watching. I don't have to worry about makeup, sweating off and heels. <laughs> like I could just be comfortable and dance and have fun. Yes, of course. And for your subscribers, I think I mentioned to you, but I'll mention it and you could also link them up. But uh, we're going to give them a 10% off promo code if they use APARM, APARM. So they use that, you'll put that in, they'll get a 10% off either their monthly subscription, or we have an annual subscription option where you save $15 per month by doing the annual subscription option. Thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's our Christmas gift to our listeners. Oh, <laughs> our awesome. New Year's gift. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's so cool. Oh, you're such a pleasure to talk to. You have such this like great, happy, loving energy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Me too. I like having people like you on the show. All about good vibes. I'm just, you know, we're all about having a good time and enjoying Seriously. the presence in this lifetime. So do you have a couple of minutes for our five fun questions that we like to wrap up each episode with? Yes, of course. Okay, here we go. Number one, what is your favorite Armenian food? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> like your first one, they go, oh, obviously, Khorovats is up there, but like barbecue went to guys. But I would say, you know what? I've always loved yogurt, so I'm going to go with sapas. Mm, sapas, nice. Yeah. Do you understand both Western and Eastern Armenian? I do. So I was born in Yerevan, obviously the, the different dialect. And then when I came out here, I went to Mesrobian, which taught different dialect, the Western dialect. So I, I understand both. I mix both of them up. So sometimes people are like, which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> What's the most American thing about you? Ooh, I like, that's interesting. Um, I would say being open-minded. Yeah, just being open minded. Um, I feel like yeah. that's pretty much most. Yeah, mm -hmm. I cannot wait until we change the culture around that, and people no longer associate Armenians with being closed minded because Armenians will have 
evolved. <laughs> yeah. And I think we're getting better at that too, honestly. The last I agree. Yeah, we are. We'll get there. It'll take time because of all the tradition and history behind it all. But yeah, it'll take time. Yeah. And I think it's possible to keep all of that. Nobody wants to get rid of all of that. You keep oh, no. it. It's it's sacred. No. And you become open to other things. Exactly. Exactly. Because look, there's no one religion, right? I, I'm right. Christian. I believe in Christianity, but I also know that there, there's Buddhism, there's Hinduism, there's different types. And I can't say what makes me to say that your religion is wrong and mine is right. So you have to be open-minded to people from all over the world. You know, we're at the end of the day, we're the human race. We're human beings. So we're all on the same team. Absolutely. Speaking of all being on the same team, the next question is, do you have a favorite Armenian celebrity? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'm my, my boy, Antic. So, oh. uh, comedian. Yeah, he, uh, he, uh, I, tra I trained him. So I was lucky to do personal training with him and his friends. He's become my favorite Armenian celebrity even more now. Since he's is he featured in your dance videos? <laughs> you know what? Not yet. But oh. we, we might get it. So, so actually the music producer that I was telling you about, it's his buddy and I, God, God works in mysterious ways. So somehow when I started training Antic, I was putting this program, the, art, the dance fitness program together. And I met Vache, who's also named as therapist and he's the music producer. And God put us in that contact where we started talking and now he's creating music for me and I'm doing personal training for him. So, so that's how that came about. Um, and we're like really close friends now. Us three, it's Suren, who's a great blues guitarist from Armenia. He has a show coming up in a couple of weeks and Antic and uh, Vache. So it's uh, it's become like a brotherhood, a new brotherhood. Wow. That, yeah. That's so cool. I love it when things synchronize like that. It's crazy how the universe works and God in mysterious ways. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, very true. So um, my last question is, do you know how to read Armenian coffee cups? I don't. I don't. And I wish my I did, but my grandma used to. And Aww. God bless her soul. She was, she's amazing. One my, my number one fan. And um, she used to read my coffee cups. And I would I would always do it. It's funny because I would sit down and have coffee with her. And and whenever I had something big planned, like a new venture like this, like this, for example, I would I would go to her and have her read my coffee. I'm like, what do you see? <laughs> So I, I would love for you to read my coffee cups. You know? I would love to. Um, you, as you know, we post them every Monday. We post photos yeah. of the of people's coffee cups. And if you, you know, drink your next Armenian coffee cup and snap a few photos of the inside for us, I will be more than happy to post it. And in addition to asking our listeners to comment on it, I will take a special look and tell you what I see, maybe in a private message, but I'll oh, tell you what I, I see in your I cup. I love it. I appreciate that. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for talking to us today. I'm very, very excited about your program. I, I think it's kind of genius. I cannot believe that this hasn't been done before, but I'm really glad that you're the one doing it. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited. And I'm glad that you, uh, you had me on the show to be able to, uh, talk to your viewers and give them the opportunity to, you know, get healthy in 2022 and in all aspects, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. And one quick note, I forgot to mention to you just uh, as a side note, but we're going to air like a 20 minute skit on Armenian TV. So for your Armenian viewers and even non-Armenian, but uh -huh. it's, <laughs> it's on, it's going to be on ARTN TV. Okay. And it's, I, we don't know yet. It's going to either air on January 1st or January 2nd. So that's either Saturday, January 1st or Sunday, January 2nd, but I'll give you more details. And, uh, it's going to be on spectrum. I think charters channel 385 and then spectrum time Warner's 1624. But if you would like a 20 minute little, uh, little trial, yeah. it's well, going to let us know. And, um, if, if you know, before this you know, airs, I'll put it in the show notes. And if not, I'll just put it on the, on Instagram and have it out there for, for people to, to watch. Oh, perfect. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can sign up for Adi Body. I have to pronounce it in a sort of Western Armenian pronunciation <laughs> <laughs> um, at adibody.com. And you can contact them on Instagram at Body body. Instead of spelling that out for you, I am going to point you to the show notes for this episode where all of this will be spell checked <laughs> and I'll have the link so that you won't have any trouble reaching them. 
Thank you to our Armenian Enough family and especially to those who support us on Patreon. We couldn't do this without you. Please subscribe for a free trial of Adi Body on January 1st. And don't forget to use your code APARM for a 10% off for our listeners. And I really appreciate that so much, Tig. My pleasure. Please share this episode with all your friends and family and everyone you love so that everyone can get healthy and fit in the new year. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, remember that you are always more than enough.